Welcome back to CP's Garage, where today we are doing backing plates on the Super Duty Axle Swapped OBS. We will also be showing you how to install these hubs properly. So let's get back down to it. CP's Garage, where today we are installing backing plates on our OBS with the 05 axle swap underneath of it. My backing plates were completely rusted out when I got the axle. This also caused me to uh, go rolling down a hill in Kentucky. Causing the bed to be a different color than the truck. So since Power Stroke Tech Talk with A-Rod does not do does not do driveline videos very often. I figure I'll do a video on how to uh, do the hubs and the backing plate at the same time. Without further ado, let's get to it. So the parts we're gonna need are these wheel seals and axle seals. At least one quart of one quart of 75-140. We're gonna need OT, OCT tool 6601 and or OTC tool 205-422 and 205-153. This will install the new seals on the back side of the hubs. And this will allow us to tighten the bolt for the hub. First step is going to be take this wheel off. I'm going to do it one side at a time so I'm not spilling diff fluid all over the place. So let me set you up. We shall get started. All you have to do is get it high enough to get the tire off the ground. Then we'll, we'll throw a jack stand right there where the U-bolts are. Then we'll get the tire off and start working on getting the brake caliper and brake rotors off and get this hub out. The tool I use to get the center caps off is just this Harbor Freight radiator pick tool. Let's go in and grab it. Grab it and pull. Just like that. You'll need a 21 to get off your lug nuts and you'll need an 18 to get off your axle bolts. And now we'll be, be back after this lawnmower is done. Alright, now that the wheel's off and the noisy lawnmower from next door is no longer present, we'll rip these axle bolts up. Make sure to throw a drain pan underneath of it and be prepared for a little axle grease to come out. Take a little pry bar, get behind the axle, pop it out. Be sure to have a couple rags ready to catch this axle with. While the axle's draining, we can take off the brake caliper. What I recommend doing is grabbing a screwdriver or a pry bar or something and getting it in the brake fin inside the fins and pulling the caliper over to release it a little bit to help get it off. I use a pry bar, you can use a big screwdriver, whatever tickles your fancy. Okay, you need a 21 millimeter to get the caliper bracket bolts out.
as you can see this backing plate uh pretty much non-existent the axle was from ohio so they rusted out and there's no parking brake parts left in this thing good thing these takeoffs from this axle that went to the junkyard had all the parts I need and it should be just a straight bolt on deal after I get the hub off. Alright, now the hub's ready to come off. We're going to take our special tool, tool 6601, and slide it in. Then we'll take our half inch drive ratchet. pop this bad boy off. This will ratchet as it's coming off. Once you get it loose, it should pretty much spin off by hand. Just be careful because you will have the bearing coming out with it as well. So what I do to take these off is I get a pry bar, and I get the corner of the hub, just kind of pop, and they'll fall right off. All right, now that the hub's off, you'll probably be left with this inner seal thing needs it needs to come off as well four says to use a two jaw on this inner seal um, I've never used one I've never used a two jaw to pull off that either oh yeah we have safety sandals as well because Florida man um, I've always used a pry bar or it's always come off for me so we're gonna try to get this bad boy off one-handed just be careful not to damage the spindle as well and she's coming off with a little love a little rocking back and forth action and she is about and she's about ready to come off right now so what we'll do is we'll grab a rag and some of our beloved brake cleaner and uh and we'll go brake cleaner mafia on this bad boy time to use the brake clean clean it up we're all nice and clean and prepared Let's put the hub back on now, after we've cleaned up the spindle we're going to take off these four bolts or four nuts we'll take off these four nuts they are 24 millimeters you will more than likely need a swivel to get them off For all that's holy, please use an impact rated swivel if you're using an impact gun on them. You don't want the swivel to blow up in your face. This thing has got a whole ton of rust on it. It's probably gonna need a hammer to get it off. So let's beat it off. So let's smack this bad boy.
So this is all that's left. So this is all that's left of our backing plate. Should look like that, but it looks like that. So we'll grab our new backing plate or new used backing plate and throw it on. In reverse of uh, how we take it off. I guess it helps to take the last bolt off. Or last nut. I guess it helps to take the last nut off. Now we'll just torque those four nuts down to factory specifications. So now that we've got the backing plate installed and torqued down, we will uh, again become part of the brake clean mafia again. And we'll go to town with the brake clean, make sure everything's clean. That is the big thing, being clean. Clean off our nut. Before we go back together, we're also going to have to put in that new seal right here. So what I normally will do is I will throw this up here. I'll throw this up here. I'll get on the bearing or I'll get behind the bearing whichever is easier and I will knock out the seal with a hammer it's best to use like a brass punch and just use the inner race of the bearing push the seal out with the bearing so I will be back once I get the seal out One thing you do want to be mindful of is this oil slinger. It goes between the bearing and the new seal. And these tabs, these tabs go towards the bearing away from the seal. If you put it the other way, you'll be doing the job over again, probably damaging something that you don't want to pay for. So lay it back down like that. When your seat, when the hub's in this position, a good time to check your bearings for rust, which I do not see any on this one. Don't see no bit. Don't don't see any. Uh, I don't see any pitting or rust on that, and nothing on this guy either so now it's time to 
get our other tool and install our seals. So what I find easiest to do is take a rotor, put it on the ground, take a rotor, put it on the ground like this, then we can grab our hub and put it in the rotor like so. Then we'll take our clean oil slinger and put it on the inner race like that. Then we can install our seal. This is what our seal looks like. It has nice sealing nice sealing service on the outside and it seals on the inside with rubber. We should have some grease on it. We should have some grease on it so it helps it slide onto the we'll now take our seal installer tool, slide the seal on it, and pound this bad boy into its home. You'll hear it change when the seal's all the way installed. Now that our seal's installed, you can see it all the way around, nice and smooth. We'll put a little bit of axle grease on the on the seal, and we'll put a little more axle grease or axle lube on the uh, spindle as well. <sighs> Ford recommends in the workshop manual to put apply a little grease around here where the seal will go, and a little grease on the spindle itself for lubrication. Once the hub is actually installed, we also have to put one ounce of grease in each hub prior to putting the bearing back in. So we want to take care not to have the seal hit the spindle on the way in. We'll clean our bearing off prior to installing it. So there's no dirt or anything in it. So we're gonna squirt. one ounce of oil in there, throw the bearing in it, align the tab, align the tab on the nut with the tab on the axle housing. We'll use our tool to start the nut. Here, ratchet. They want you to spin the hub as well as you're tightening it. We'll tighten this down to approximately 60 foot. So we are going to torque this to 60 foot pounds. Since we are running a Ford Sterling axle, we're going to spin, spin, spin as it's torquing. Now that we've hit our torque, we go back seven teeth since we're reusing the original bearings.
So we'll put your ratchet back on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're at and we're at the perfect port. No play in it. She is good to be back to be put back together again. We'll clean off the hub. We'll put a new We'll clean off the ceiling surface of the hub. Since we're not trying to break clean out all the new oil, we'll just get a little on a rag, clean it off. Now we will grab our axle and replace the seal. Now grab yourself a pick. I prefer this 90 degree pick. We will get it under it, grab it out of the channel, and let it fall to the floor. We'll grab the new one. Put it on the axle. And slide our axle back in after we put some lubrication on the ring. We'll get some more differential goop. And we'll shove her home. Try to get this lined up as good as possible before sliding the axle in. Now I just put the axle nuts in, rotor, and brake caliper, torque them all down to spec, use the Loctite where you need it, and it'll be over. You just gotta do it again on the other side if you're doing that much work. Gotta do it again on the other side. So, with that being said, see if you subscribe, make sure to like, comment, and share this video, and we'll see you next video. Peace!